Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Exercise Science Lab to show you how to do a manual blood pressure measurement. Depending on the type of measurement you're taking, the person is going to be in different body positions. All right, so you can have supine, you can have seated, um, which are both resting measurements, or you can have exercising blood pressure measurement. If you are doing a resting measurement, so specifically a seated measurement, what you're going to want to do is have them seated in a chair where they're fully supported. Their feet are flat on the ground, their legs are not crossed, and you're going to want them in that position for at least five minutes before taking the measurement. All right, so the next thing you want to do is take a blood pressure cuff like this and make sure it is the appropriate size for your participant. So if you um, get in here and you can kind of feel the cuff somewhere before this Velcro strap starts, so right about there, you can feel the end of a, um, a air bladder. All right, so the air bladder is between my fingers right now. You want that air bladder when wrapped around the arm to cover somewhere between 80% of the arm, so this is the upper arm around the bicep and tricep, so 80% of the arm and 100% of the arm. If that air bladder is so large that it starts to overlap on itself when you're wrapping it around, it is too big. If it is so small that it doesn't go at least 80% around the arm, this is a, a rough estimate based on just your guess, um, but if it doesn't go at least 80% around the arm, then the cuff is too small. All right, so you wanna make sure that you use the appropriate size cuff for the person you're measuring. When applying the blood pressure cuff, make sure that you get this the little artery dot. That's where the brachial artery on the inside of the arm needs to be in, rel in relation to the cuff. All right, so keep in mind that where the brachial artery is in the upper arm is not the same place as where it is in the lower arm. So in the upper arm, it's on the inside of the arm between the bicep and the tricep on the um, antecubital space where you're gonna put the stethoscope, it's a little bit more sort of on the front of the arm, all right? So you're gonna kind of curve up a little bit. So when you go to put the blood pressure cuff on, you wanna wrap it fairly snug around the arm, all right? You don't want the person's arm, uh, when it's in a downward position, to have the cuff just sliding off, all right? So you want it on tight enough so it doesn't slide off easily, but not so tight that it's gonna cut off blood supply without inflating the cuff itself. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is you want to take the sphygmomanometer, which is the uh, the dial on the cuff, and you want to make sure that's in a position where you can actually see it when doing the blood pressure measurement. So most of them are going to have a little clip like this in the back, and you can just take it and clip it onto whatever part of the cuff is very easy for you to see whenever you're doing the measurement. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to grab your stethoscope, which is what you're going to use to listen to the blood pressure, and you're going to look and see where the angle of the earpieces are going. So you can see that they're going downward here, um, and that is what I want, because I want, when I put this in my ears like this, I want that angle to go towards my nose. So also, if you're using a stethoscope that someone else has used recently, or has used since the last time you've used it, um, you want to make sure that you clean the, uh, the ear pieces off really well with this like, alcohol swab. Probably not a bad idea to also clean on occasion the, the diaphragm and the bell of the stethoscope just so it's clean for your um, patients or participants or whatever you're whoever you're testing. You also want to make sure that the correct side of the stethoscope is turned on. So you can see here, so I'm going to hold it and I'm going to turn it 180 degrees. So if I do that and you can hear a little bit of a click, that is me turning one side on and the other side off. All right, so best way to know if it's turned on correctly is to put the earpieces in and then just give a really gentle tap onto the side that you plan on using. All right, so for blood pressure, we're gonna use this diaphragm side, so this bigger side, not the smaller side, this is called the bell. All right, so you wanna make sure that the diaphragm is on, so again, put it in your ears, give it a light tap, you should hear it really loud. If you tap the other side, you should barely hear it. You'll hear it, but it shouldn't be loud. And if you wanna test it further, just twist it 180 degrees, and you'll see that this side becomes loud where this side used to be loud, and now it's more quiet. All right, so again, make sure the diaphragm side is on when doing a blood pressure measurement. Be sure when you're doing a blood pressure measurement that you have the cuff high enough on the um, upper arm that you're able to get to that antecubital space on the inside of the elbow. Also, be sure that you are putting the stethoscope f uh, firmly onto the arm and that there isn't sort of a, a gap. So like if you're putting it on the arm and it's like this, and there's that gap between the diaphragm and the skin, you're not gonna be able to hear it very well. So you wanna have it firmly on the skin at the, at the elbow. That means sometimes you might have to do a little bit of a, a bend to the elbow in order to get it to be fully in contact with the skin. All right, so when you're ready to take the blood pressure measurement, you simply take the bulb here and you twist this little knob until it's all the way to the right. So it's just finger tight all the way to the right, 
don't twist it any harder than that because if you do, it's going to be really hard to open up and you're going to end up messing up the blood pressure measurement by releasing the pressure too quickly. All right, so just light finger tight just like that all the way to the right and then you're going to use this bulb to just squeeze, inflate the pressure to something at least 40 millimeters of mercury above what you expect the uh, systolic blood pressure to be, which is a higher number. Um, what I usually do is just inflate it to around 200 uh, millimeters of mercury. Unless you know the person has severe hypertension or you're doing um, maximal exercise testing, then you're going to want to go a little higher than that. Throughout the blood pressure measurement, just make sure that you're also supporting the person's arm that you're measuring. All right, so what I usually do is I take their elbow and I hold it with one hand. I put their hand between my arm and my side and so it's kind of like this I'm completely supporting their arm so their hand, their lower arm supported by me squeezing in on their hand their upper arm supported by me holding their elbow you don't want the person to hold their own arm up it's going to artificially increase their blood pressure within that arm all right so make sure that you are completely in control of their arm and that they're relaxed all right so what I do is I again I squeeze their hand in between my arm and my side I hold the elbow and then I just kind of give a shake if you can't go like this and have the person's arm move with your hand, you're not holding their arm up, they are holding their own arm up. All right, so with the cuff inflated to somewhere around 200 millimeters of mercury or higher, um, you're now going to make sure that you have the diaphragm of the stethoscope. So again, this bigger side, you're going to have that on the brachial artery. All right, so again, brachial artery in the antecubital space. So get that on there, get everything situated. You want to lift the arm or lower it if necessary so that the, um, the artery where this stethoscope is placed is approximately level to the, the point of the heart. All right, so you want, if it's up like this, you might have to come down a little bit. If it's all the way down like this, you're gonna have to bring it up a little bit because you want that level with the heart of the, of the individual. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the little knob here that you use to um, stop the air from coming out of the cuff and you're gonna turn it just ever so slightly to the left. That little tiny twist, you probably didn't even see it on camera. That's all you need. So we're talking about maybe a 10th of a turn of the dial. All right, so turn it down just a little bit. You want the air to come out of the cuff at a rate of about two to four millimeters of mercury um, per second. Once you start hearing the heart beats, you want to go at about two to four millimeters of mercury per heartbeat. Make sure that you're watching the dial and that you note know when you first hear a heartbeat. All right, so you're going to continue to listen for um, the heartbeat and it's going to get um, change in pitch and get louder and softer and do uh, a number of different sort of sounds um, over the next uh, few seconds as you're releasing the cuff. When you get um, closer to the diastolic blood pressure, what you're going to hear is one of two things. You're either going to hear a complete stop of the sound. So in other words, it's going to go from um, hearing the blood pressure to maybe a little bit of a muffled sound and then nothing. The last blood pressure you hear, that is the fifth carotid cough sound and that is the diastolic blood pressure. All right, so if you are working with somebody who is exercising, it's likely that you're never going to hear a complete disappearance of the sound. All right, so if you never hear the sound go away, if it continues all the way to zero or near zero, so 20 or 40 millimeters of mercury, something like that, what you're gonna listen for is the fourth carotid cross sound, and you're gonna call that the diastolic blood pressure. The fourth carotid cross sound is that muffling sound that I had mentioned earlier. So again, you're gonna start hearing the blood pressure. It's usually gonna get louder and louder and louder. It's gonna change in pitch, and then all of a sudden you're gonna hear this muffling sound. All right. That muffling sound is the fourth carotid cuff sound during exercise where the blood pressure, the diastolic blood pressure goes all the way to zero. The fourth carotid cuff sound is what we call diastolic blood pressure.
So once you hear the diastolic blood pressure, um, you're going to want to keep going with the, the sort of slow deflation of the cuff for another 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury or so, um, just to make sure that you actually heard the correct diastolic blood pressure, because sometimes it'll kind of go away and come back a little bit. Um, so if you do that, um, if that you continue that, uh, that slow decline of pressure, you'll be able to make sure that you actually caught the diastolic blood pressure. Once you're absolutely certain that you have the diastolic blood pressure, completely release that valve, let all the air out so that the um, blood flow to the arm can become regular again because it is a little bit uncomfortable on the person. So the only real difference between doing a resting blood pressure and doing an exercising blood pressure is the person's moving a little bit and so you have to really kind of hold onto their arm and uh, make sure that you can stabilize it well. Um, the only other thing that I recommend doing differently, um, doing an exercising blood pressure versus a, a resting one, is that you go a little bit slower when you deflate the cuff because you're going to want to hear between sort of noise in the, in the room. So if they're on an exercise bike, there's going to be some sort of grinding and resistance type sounds coming from the bike that's going to be a little hard for you to hear over. If they're on a treadmill, this gets even more complicated because the foot strikes on the belt of the treadmill tend to sound a little bit like a blood pressure um, or a heartbeat. So you want to make sure that you are going slow enough that you can tell the difference between their foot striking the treadmill and their heart beating. That means again going slow, listening, trying to find that rhythm of the heartbeat. All right, so it's going to go at a fairly consistent rhythm most of the time. Um, and so you can hear that rhythm. And then when you see the, the foot striking at the same time, you can kind of cancel those out in your head. It does take a lot of practice, um, but the technique is essentially the same for the exercising as it is for the resting blood pressure measurement. All right, so that was uh, how to do a blood pressure measurement, uh, both at rest and during exercise. All right, so um, if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments section below, and I'll try to get back to you. Otherwise, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.